In this video, we'll talk about other logical equivalencies, and a lot of these are common in mathematics. You've probably seen a lot of them before. We're just formalizing them. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about a special case of two conclusions. So if I have A, and remember A in this case is some kind of phrase or a sentence, A implies B and C. Well, this would be logically equivalent to A implies B. B and A implies C. Now that might seem a little strange how I can just break it up instantly, but if A implies B and C, where B and C are again phrases, well it would make sense that A can get you either one individually as well. So a way to think about this is a square is a square if it has four congruent sides and four congruent angles, so four right angles. And if we think about that, well, a square implies it has four congruent sides, and a square implies it has four right angles. So I can rewrite it, and it still means the same thing. So a square implies four congruent sides. True. Also, a square has four right angles. And if I combine these two sentences together, they mean the same as the original. It's just a, a different way of writing. And sometimes that can be useful in that maybe I don't want to try and prove all of this. I could prove one piece and then I could prove another separately, two separate proofs, and then ultimately put them back together when I'm done. Let's talk about hypothesis in the conclusion, sometimes referred to as a chain. And this one is really important for proofs. So what we have here is H implies B, which then implies C. So a lot of what we see here where this is useful in proofs is that we can say, okay, H would be given conditions on a triangle. Then we can say one of our triangle congruence theorems applies. That would be B, and C would be the triangle's congruent, just as an example. So this would be logically equivalent to H and B imply C. Now in this case, H and B come first. If I can show that I've met the criteria for um, a triangle congruence theorem, then I could say it applies, and then the triangle is congruent. It's very important for proofs. I can, instead of having to make a proof to get from H to B, I can just satisfy both H and B and get myself to C. So, to iterate our example, let's say we have three pairs of congruent sides. on two triangles. This would imply side, side, side applies, which implies that the triangles are congruent. And if I can go through, and basically when we go through a proof, it, it kind of doesn't so much matter which way you do it, whether you think of it as, okay, I've satisfied the conditions, therefore side, side, side applies. Or you could say, okay, I've satisfied the conditions and side, side, side would apply here we can still get to the triangles are congruent. And it's a very, very powerful logical equivalency that sets up a lot of our proofs. And again, this is something we've seen before, we're just formalizing it. If we have an or in the hypothesis, so in this case, A or B, I'll put them in parentheses here, imply C. And this one seems a little strange at first. This one would be logically equivalent to a implies C and B implies C. Now again, it seems weird that we would go from an or to an and. Seems strange. However, if we put an example of this, let's let X be equal to 2 or X be equal to negative 2. Then I can say X squared is equal to 4. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that it would be logically equivalent to, okay, x equals 2 would imply 
x squared equals 4. So, again, logical equivalence means that it's true or false for the same values, for the same conditions at all times. So if I'm looking at this, <clears throat> this one I think to be true. I also think this one to be true as well, as an example. Now I have to complete the other side of the statement, because what if x is negative 2? So I could say, and if x equal negative 2, then x squared is equal to 4. Basically, I'm just rewriting it. I'm saying, okay, well, if x is 2, then x squared is definitely 4. That much is true. Then I have to deal with the or case, because in the hypothesis here, I'm saying if it's one of these two things, you will get 4 when you square it, no matter what. All I'm saying is here, if x equal 2, then x squared equal 4. And I'm also saying if x is negative 2, I also get 4 when I square it. These two are logically equivalent, and it's a little weird when you think about it, but it does hold up, logically speaking.